chalk, organic eggs, and cadaver legs. Intravascular lithotripsy's journey from idea to reality. 2007. Two serial entrepreneurs, Daniel Hawkins, a businessman, and John Adams, an electrical engineer who worked on early pacemakers, were working at a medtech incubator. Their job was simple. Identify and service unmet medical needs through new technology. A constant brainstormer, Daniel would read reams of published papers trying to uncover an unmet need. Daniel began exploring urology and kidney stones, Learning about the difficulties of targeting stones with lithotripsy, he told John, there has to be a better way, but what is lithotripsy anyway? That day, over their usual Subway BMT at lunch, John recalled hearing of an electrophysiologist who accidentally held two defibrillator leads too close together, causing them to spark and catch the clinic's bedsheet on fire. John replicated the scenario to better understand what happened, and in doing so, learned the underlying principles of lithotripsy. He explained to Daniel how lithotripsy works. An electrical current produces a spark that vaporizes fluid and produces powerful pressure waves that travel at the speed of sound but pass safely through the body's soft tissue to break up denser kidney stones. Fast forward two weeks, Daniel had subscribed to a U.S. Patent Office email list to monitor hundreds of new patents published each week. One described a scoring balloon and claimed the technology could crack calcium in the vessel, but not disrupt soft, healthy tissue. Remembering the similar mechanism of lithotripsy discussed at their lunch conversation, Daniel yelled to John over their shared wall. John, I have a crazy idea about lithotripsy. How small can electrical wires be? The diameter of a human hair, John replied. But they won't carry much power, why? What if we put it in an angioplasty balloon to crack calcium prior to dilation? Daniel asked. I bet it would work if we get enough power, but the heat and pressure may pop the balloon, John said. John began tinkering with a prototype. After many failed experiments trying to optimize the energy delivery, he recreated lithotripsy using standard wires and a power source he built, but he still didn't know if the energy was strong enough to crack the calcium. They drilled holes in sticks of toy chalk to replicate a calcified vessel. When they activated the lithotripsy, the chalk broke into several pieces. They started to think they might have something, though they hadn't talked to a physician yet. Enter Stanford cardiologist Todd Brinton, head of the school's biodesign program and also an entrepreneur. Coincidentally, Todd was designing a clinical study using another technology to treat calcified coronary arteries. Todd reaffirmed the unmet medical need they'd uncovered. The existing tools on the market, he explained, were fraught with user issues and significant complications. There really were no good tools to not just cross, but also effectively open up undilated calcified lesions. When Daniel and John ran their concept by Todd, he was immediately on board and filled the missing void in their team, the clinician perspective. He told Daniel and John, doctors know how to do angioplasty. We have to make it just like angioplasty, as simple as we can. The trio, businessman, engineer, and clinician, pitched potential investors with the chalk anecdote for a year without success. Unfortunately, while some investors recognized calcified lesions as a significant problem, not one thought lithotripsy was a feasible solution. Undeterred, the three-person shockwave medical team began to refine an early prototype in John's garage, one night, John was researching what he could use as a proxy to calcium, which can be one millimeter thick in the artery. He measured some eggshells from his wife's chickens and realized they were about the same thickness. So the next day, John brought eggshells to Daniel for testing. When the lithotripsy was activated inside the eggshell, it destroyed the shell, but the membrane under the shell's surface remained fully intact and undamaged. Daniel, videotaping the experiment, immediately sent the clip to Todd, who confirmed that the intact membrane was much like the endothelium of a blood vessel and demonstrated the technology's ability to safely pass through soft tissue while impacting hard calcium. With that, they had proof of concept and no money. Todd began exploring how to assess preclinical feasibility. He and an engineer approached family and friends to secure an initial $300,000 investment to begin development rent office space in Silicon Valley, and set up testing space for the first bench prototypes. Together, they started working on initial product ideas on nights and weekends, 
brainstorming with John and Daniel to work through issues and share ideas. They secured diseased vessels from cadaver legs and tested using lithotripsy to break up the rigid, calcified arteries and make them more compliant, confirming their results using an ultrasound imaging machine purchased on eBay. With initial bench data and the million-dollar video, the company attracted several experienced medtech angel investors who staked them the money to get through preclinical testing and their first-in-man study in New Zealand. A few years and several successful clinical trials later, the technology overcame issues and progressed significantly. In 2016, the company's dream was realized when the FDA cleared the peripheral technology. Never content to rest on their laurels, the Shockwave team is now focused on developing new applications for lithotripsy. They believe anywhere there's problematic calcium in the cardiovascular system, lithotripsy can be used to disrupt it. Learn more at shockwaveivl.com.